everybody. What's up? It's Miss Knockout here. And you're tuning in to Conversations with the Rap Chick. So, we're just going to invite some people. Hey, what's up? Welcome, welcome, people. So, this week, we're going to have a little fun. Let me invite some people. Let them know that I'm here. We in the building. Then we're going to get started. How's everybody feeling on this fine Saturday? It's fall already, right? This year just, uh, it kind of like swooped by. I don't know if anybody else is feeling like that, but it was a heck of a year, but a quick year. We'll be at Christmas before we know it. So everybody, welcome to Conversations of a with a rap chick. <laughs> I said conversations of a rap chick. But it's conversations with a rap chick. And I'm your host, Miss Knockout. And I'm just going to invite some people. And we're going to get started with the dog going. We're going to get to it. And we're going to get into some things. All right. So. This week. We're going to. Um. We're going to do some, um, how you say it, audience participation on some topics. And um, we're just going to go in and do what we do every week. Um, last week was real cool with um, Jovi Beauty. Thanks again, Jovi, for tuning in on a holiday weekend at that, you know. So that's big love right there. And um, we put it down. You could go back and watch that show on my timeline. <sighs> just I save everything, you know. Just like some people just like to save everything. So what you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, we talk about women in the business mostly. But, you know, we discuss a lot of things here. Not just that. We go into a lot of different things. So, um, this week, we're going to talk about the scene of women in hip-hop as in now. We speak about women in hip-hop before and how they evolved, and we didn't get into that yet on this channel. But we know about that. We know about how uh, women came and involved in the business but we want to talk about now and how there is a lack of diversity with women in hip-hop there's a lack of variety in women in hip-hop we got all these varieties of men we got you know gangsters we got the pushers we got the punchliners, we got the lyricals, but with the females, we got one kind of rapper. And I think I, I think you know what that kind of rapper is. What's up, Deanna? I see you. I see you. What's up, Destiny? What's up, Showbiz? Hey, what's up, Renee? Hip hop loves. Um, Hip Hop Loves have a, 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 a Zoom every two weeks on um, Saturdays at 12 o'clock. I'll put the flyer up. You know, should follow Hip Hop Loves and it's worldwide. And, you know, it's a real nice Zoom. goes for a few hours. We just discuss a, a variety of topics on there as well. Meet some new people. You know what I'm saying? I see Destiny's in here. Um... See who, who's in the building. I see Deanna. What's up? What's up, Musi Music? Hey, thank you. You like my hairstyle? Thanks, girl. Thank you. Musi is all the way from Italy. Yeah, thanks, D. She's already from. Uh, she's already up and ready to go at it. From all the way from Italy. It's like what? What time is it in Italy, Musi? It's like two a.m. or something, right? 
I might when I put my flies up, I'm gonna have to do like hip hop loves gave me an idea. You gotta put because we're on the internet, you gotta put um the times worldwide. You know what I'm saying? So um Jennifer, if you're in here, you know, give me a, a thumbs up and a, and drop a comment. But um I wanna talk about and I'm gonna bring um Destiny in. Destiny, you still in here? Give me a thumbs up. I know you're in here. Um I wanna talk about the scene of women in hip hop right now. How we feel about it. That's what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm gonna say off the top, before we even get into this, I'm gonna tell you. I like Cardi B. I I love you know the, the her song choices, what she puts out, and y'all can say what y'all want about WAP. Everybody got their feelings about WAP, and I perfectly understand. But let's let's just let's let's just call a spade a spade. Hip hop has been doing provocative shit for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop has had their provocative songs provocative little kim had her whole era you know she talked her provocative shit lou provocative you know say we had my girl jiggy g she had the, that's what they that's they lane so hip-hop and provocative almost goes hand in hand okay so don't y'all get up and wake up one day and say oh my god wet ass pussy oh my god like y'all some virgins and y'all ain't used to that you know what I'm saying? The USA is so hypocritical. They'll be like, oh my God, what is this? I don't like it. And then next thing you know, that same thing is at the number one and on charts. Now, it ain't Ghostbusters putting it up there. It's your asses. The same motherfuckers are like, oh my God, oh my God, wet ass pussy, oh my God. No, y'all like that shit. That's why it's number one. Okay? Luke been doing it. Like, we could go on and on and on. Sex sells. So we're going to get this straight. You know what I'm saying? I like Cardi B. I like Meg Thee Stallion. I think Meg Thee Stallion has a very nice flow. She locks in with the beat. And she talks her talk. Cardi B worked at the strip club. What you do when you're a hip-hop artist? You talk about what you know, right? So she come from a strip club. What y'all thought expect you and thought she was gonna talk about baking cookies? You know what I'm saying? She gonna talk about it's 2 a.m. Yeah, okay. Big shout out to Moosey. She up here 2 a.m. hanging with a motherfucker. I, I I'm that's love. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. I gotta bring her on one week. She's trying to do that thing in, in Italy. So we gotta get you on here one week. I want you to, I want to promote it, and I want you to have your own week, though. We're going to still bring some peoples in here tonight. So, all right, I see you. So, yeah, so let's get back to the haps. So, the USA is so crit hypocritical. Y'all be like, oh, my God, what well, is pussy, oh, my God. And, and plus, I understand, you know, 10, 11, 9-year-olds, they on the Internet. They listen to music. You know what I'm saying? And then people are rapping about they wet ass pussy. I perfectly understand. Ooh, all this time I didn't have my headphones in. I'm sorry. And, you know, y'all could still hear me though, right? All this time. All right. So, I understand that little kids, they, they ain't supposed to be hearing about the wet ass pussy and all that. But it's not the entertainer's job to monitor your kids. Guess whose job that is? Guess. Take a wild guess whose job that is. Your ass. It's your job to monitor your kid on the internet. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a full-time job. We got the weirdos, the pimps, and the pushers that's waiting for you to slip up. A WAP song is the least of your worries, okay? I just want to get this off the top so when I go into it, y'all won't think, oh my God, she's talking about Cardi B. No, I like Cardi B. I like her music. 
bite me. And then another thing is, I remember when Cardi B first came out, right? And a lot of people was uh, op- opposed and appalled that somebody like Cardi B got in and got it popping. Yo was so mad at her to the point that if I said, oh yeah, I like Cardi B, y'all ready to take the sticks out and beat me and chase me through the town with damn torches. Because I said I like somebody. If you don't like something, for whatever reasons, keep your thoughts and your views and beliefs to yourself. You ain't going to bully me to tell me what I like. I like what I like. People like what they like. You don't like what you don't like. Let's keep it like that. You don't like it, you don't like it. But y'all didn't like her for other reasons. It ain't because she was the wackest artist on the face of the earth. No, it's because she was able to obtain something that people been trying to do and hasn't been able to obtain. Success. You know what I'm saying? And why is that? It's because people like yo asses don't support the different musics that's out there. Once again, whose fault is that? Yo ass. So you don't support the different music out there, but this girl happened to do and maneuver and got to the top and breaking records and all that. And y'all are so mad about it that if anybody says says that they like them, y'all are ready to chase them through the town town like they did Frankenstein. And she say you like Cardi B. No. You know what I'm saying? You got I, I, I gotta admit. She picks good songs. You know what I'm saying? She knows what to wear. She got y'all's attention. She has a personality. Megan the Stallion, she picks good songs. You know, she 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 fat she's fashionable. And it is what it is. But we don't have that variety that the guys have. We don't have that. So I want to bring Destiny in here. Right, for a long time at that. Let's see what some of the people were saying. Okay, Hip Hop Love says, and male MCs have been doing it for a long time and have not been criticized. Exactly. Male MCs, yo, Hip Hop Loves is exactly right. Follow them. Follow Hip Hop Loves, by the way. Male MCs has been doing this since the beginning of the time. Degrading females, calling us bitches, calling us hoes. You know what I'm saying? Suck my pee pee. Ah, ah, ah. Bitches only good for steady fucking. And all of this shit. And y'all is like, yeah, ah, ah, yeah, yeah. But as soon as somebody come out about they wet ass pussy, y'all about to have five cardiac arrests. Let's talk about the double standard. If you don't want your kids to know about WAP, then WAP them off of those internet sites with that kind of music and WAP their asses in the bed where they're supposed to be and monitor your computer. Because only you could do it. Because the same way they could find a WAP is the same way they could find that weirdo that's going to lure them or, or, you know, just do that weirdo shit. You know, I don't want to go into that because it's crazy out there. But it's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? That's your job. So we don't have a variety in females and MCs. We don't have any diversity. And who fault is that? That's the consumer's fault. Why? Because the consumer doesn't have their own mind. The consumer has a trained mind. They're trained by the entities that be that send you signals over and over again. How many times you hear WAP on the radio? You hear making a stallion over and over and over again because these companies got money to pay to keep the repetition going. So it trains you and you're saying, hey, oh, uh, it's going through my brain. Oh, I think that's the only thing I need to hear. No, that's not the only thing you need to hear. You got fingers and you got your own brain. So we as a people, we need to be starting to support other female MCs. And then you might say, oh, 
well, where are these female MCs? I don't, I don't see them. Yeah, you don't see them because you don't support them. These girls don't get dollars and marketing dollars and, and money for advertising to get out there and be in front of the masses. I've searched the internet and followed some dope chicks. You could go on, on, on general site. He posts female MCs all day long, 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. He's posting female MCs that you've never seen before. And a lot of them are dope. Do they get a shot? No. Why? Because they didn't happen to work at a strip club that everybody came through to, to throw dollars and pop bottles. They wasn't working there. You know what I'm saying? Cardi B had a chance to network with people that got her to where she needed to go. She didn't do it all by herself. And y'all keep calling her, oh, she's dumb. Oh, oh I noticed that Candace calls, uh, calls her out her name. Well, let me tell you something. You got to be a little bit smart to get to the top of the charts. You got to be a little bit smart to break records. I know people are, oh, yo, she has a team. She has people. Yeah, you got people telling you what to do, but you still got to execute that shit. And you got artists out here that don't want to do shit. Right, hip hop loves? They picking and choose what they want to do. She getting out here, she putting in that work. That's why she's there. And you got to have a half a brain, excuse me, in your head to get there. And some marketing dollars. So we're going to bring in, hey, what's up? The twins, the disco twins is in the building. I started out with, okay. I started out with the disco twins. Much respect to Rob and Reggie, man. Word. I owe my journey to Rob and Reggie. Wherever I go in life, they get, they, they get the starts. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to throw it out there. Jeff brought me to them. I'm going to keep it funky real. But the Disco Twins, they cultivated the crop. You know what I'm saying? And made me who I am today. And I just kept going. They probably looking at me like, damn, the fuck? You kept going all that time. <laughs> Shout out to Rob and Reggie. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Breaking the New. Breaking New is a platform where you artists could get your records broken into every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Facebook, search Breaking the New, follow their page, they on here. Write this shit down if you're an artist and follow that shit. It's a lot of tools out here. Okay, so Breaking the New says the issue with women rappers that rap provocative is only because women say, women always talk and respect me. I'm a woman, don't call us bitch, and then turn around and rap about I got that wet pussy and I'm a hoe. Right, okay. I give you that, right? But check this out. Cardi B is from the strip club. What's she gonna rap about? Bacon cookies? Betty Crocker? You know what I'm saying? What's she gonna rap? You rap about what you know. If you don't rap about what you know, then you call it what? Fake. If I went to charter school and I got in and got it popping, but I I'm a gangster bitch. And people knew that I went to charter school because they went to school with me. They going to call my ass out. That bitch ain't no fucking gangster bitch. She went to fucking private school. Are you kidding me? She wore the checkered suits. They'll call you out. So in that case, she's rapping about her wet ass pussy because she was popping it in the strip clubs for a minute. All right. But I understand what you're saying, breaking the new. Hip hop love says the community. The community's job. Family and friends of the kids. Right. It takes a village. What's up, uh, Bianca? Okay. So Musi says, yes, you got to control your kids. Like if you don't want to show your kids these things, then control it and don't blame Cardi. Right. You can't. She, Cardi is not raising your kids. You think you you think culture sitting around listening to that record? Her own kid ain't listening to that record. Okay. So
Let's see, I'm going to find um, Destiny. I'm looking for Destiny to bring her in here. Hold on. Destiny, comment again so I could bring you in. Jennifer, if you're in here, comment. So we're going to bring um, Destiny in here. She's an artist from um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I met her in Hip Hop Loves um, Zoom. Wait a minute. Destiny, is that your, um, oh, okay. Destiny, comment again so I could bring you in because I can't find, um, you comment so long. Comment again, Destiny, so I could bring all requests. Yeah, so, you know, we need to, like, we need some more variety of female MCs because they're out there. You got the girl that rhymes like Biggie. You got the girl that rhymes like Jay-Z. You got lyrical females. You got funny females. They're all over the place. And we... What's up, Miss... I hope everybody's feeling good today. MC, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. What's up? That you know, you don't answer, and then they just keep calling you. Hello, I ain't answered the first time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, this is uh, Destiny. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm <clears throat> basically a lyricist. Um. I started rapping music about two years ago and putting it out on social media. Um, I like to write about, you know, life and what's going on in the world. Um, stuff that people can relate to, stuff that people can be inspired by. So um, I'm really, I like to, you know, I don't focus too much on rapping and stuff. I really focus on being an MC, and I believe that there's a big difference in that. And um, like I was saying, I love to listen to all that shit. I love Cardi B. Megan Thee Stallion, she's bad. Like, she's beyond her own level. A lot of them. Um, I like Kamaya. She talks about real stuff like that, you know? So there's a lot of females out there that got a lot of talent. So um, I've always right. been inspired by people. I want to, you know, use my music to inspire people too. So um, I just try to write stuff just to keep on, you know, um, right. basically to just, you know, talk about what's going on in the world and stuff and kind of get people open-minded about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Now, you said there's a difference. It's interesting that you brought up that there's a difference between rapping and an MC. Like, what, what are you, um, how do you, what is your definition of the two? Rapper, right. MC. MC, uh, for me, I feel like, you know, they have more to write about. They're like, there's more structure to their music. Um, uh -huh. I write about that's going on in the world, stuff that, like I said, people can relate to and stuff, more like storylines, stuff like Tupac, Biggie, like you were saying. Um, rapping, I feel like a lot of it is stuff that you hear on the radio, stuff that's put out there. Um, mm -hmm. Real mainstream. And I feel like MC is almost like an underground because a lot of times they're not on the radio. Um, but there's a lot of rappers that got a lot of talent. Like I was saying, Kamaya, I feel like she's kind of like an MC too, because she raps about a lot of, you know, uh, stuff that she went through or stuff that she did and all that stuff. Um, right. People like rappers, you're talking about Cardi B and stuff. She's definitely a rapper. and She makes music for her own, you know, like what she's doing in the club and for girls to get down and dance and all that shit. So I believe that right. there's music for everybody. And my music, uh, maybe for people, you know, that like to listen to stuff that, you know, it's going on in the world or actually hear stuff like lyrics, you know, stuff that means stuff. But I get down to, you know, WAP or whatever. I haven't really, you know, listened to the whole thing, but what I heard is pretty crazy, you know, seeing the videos and stuff. Right. But 
for them to, you know, be that confident and stuff, I think that's, that's really, um, how should I say it? To be that confident and stuff, that's really dope. Because they put themselves out there, you know, and inspire their own self. There's some girls right. that are And like a Hip Hop Love says, just because you're a stripper does not mean you're a hoe. Some people, you know, that's almost like their passion. Everybody has a different passion. And some girls love to dance and shit. If she does that and she makes music for those type of girls, or I shouldn't even say for those type of girls, but for people that right. you know, dance and everything, shit, I think that gives them, you know, like, something they could relate to and shit you know so they can get down i mean you can't go and put on some mc shit talking about storyline and what's going on in our, uh the world and you know they'd be popping it and shit so there's music for everything and like with male singing that's like the base of hip-hop you know we came in and i feel like we put the mix into it because when you hear a female and a male rap together on a song it, i just feel like it's badass you know it kind of puts like the mix to it and right you know fe uh, male rappers I appreciate them too because a lot of them are dope. Um, a lot of them are dope. So yeah. I'm inspired by music, I'm inspired like by instruments, by rappers, MCs from all over. So I feel like mm -hmm. music just inspired and can inspire in so many ways, and people can relate to it in their own way. Or, um, right. They like sometimes people want to turn up and listen to music and. That's where that comes in and stuff. But there's also people, like, I like to make music like that. I like to change it up. I like to make music that people could party to or stuff. Right. Like maybe something, somebody through the day or something like that. So I try to be diverse. So I guess the mm -hmm. difference between an MC and a rapper, I feel like the MC really focuses on, like, maybe, like, a poetry structure. And rappers right. really just put their mainstream stuff. So mainly it's, like, mainstream kind of what they talk about, what they hear, what they want to play on the radio versus MC where – we're just really rapping about our passion and how putting our emotion and all that stuff in our music. Right. But both of us. And you know, you know what was uh, interesting that hip hop, uh, Renee brought up, um, go hip hop loves every Saturday, every two weeks, Saturday, 12 PM. I'll put the flyer up. You know, what's interesting <laughs> what he brought up in the meeting was that yeah. back in the days, Music was censored on the radio. You're being mm -hmm. commercial, you couldn't put something on the radio, gangster stuff, or if you had a gun, they were like, oh, no. Or you talking about your kucha? Oh, no. You know, now it's like they want that because it creates the, that crap. Everything's about controversy now. Everybody's, everybody's clout chasing. Everything's controversy. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. I just want to read this comment of Showbiz real quick. He says, what's crazy is only women are uh, complaining about Cardi B. So your own are holding y uh, you women back and are stopping women from progress. And that's why there's only a couple of women rappers in the game. And I have to say, ding, 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 that is true. But that didn't just start now. Back when there was a period, remember there was a period when there was no female rappers? I'm talking about before M Nicki Minaj, like when Nicki Minaj emerged, she was the only one for like seven, eight years. But before her, there was virtually no girls out. And behind the scenes, from what I've seen, um, being in New York area, still on the grind, is a lot of the women were backbiting each other. You know what I'm saying? Sabotaging each other. Sticking their foot out like showgirls and tripping you down the stairs. Why? Because women... They just have this had this mindset um, before Roxanne, no sesh, after Roxanne, and that whole era. That era happened to have a, a couple of women out there. It was Salt and Pepper. There was Roxanne, Roxanne. There was the yep. real Roxanne. There was Antoinette. There was Sweet Tea. You know, I could go on. That was actually an era where, you know, you actually thought women were going to progress like the men, but then it stopped. Because, like Showbiz said, what I and what I seen with my own eyes and experience, everybody was backbiting and fighting each other. So when I show up at a showcase and they knew that I merely exist, I was I roll up and I was the enemy. You know what I'm saying? I would see this girl at every showcase. One time I was in the bathroom, I'm washing my hands, and I look over and I said, "Oh, what's up? I see you every showcase." And then she goes, "Oh yeah," she's like. Um, who are you again? I don't know you. And in my head, I'm going, this girl sees me every week. You don't know me. You see me perform every week. You don't know me. But she had to play me down. 
Because if I say, oh, yeah, yeah, Naka, I know you. Oh, yeah, you was dope last night with ah, ah, ah. That means I'm acknowledging you and I'm giving you props. They play a lot of head games. They did a lot of sabotaging, going around, talking down about you. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was crazy for a minute. And you didn't even get a chance to get to the powers that be to help you get to the next level because you didn't even make it to that point. You know what I'm saying? So when you fast forward it, it was a blank, then boom. It was a Nicki Minaj, and then boom. That era was all Nicki Minaj for about eight years, I would say, right? It's That's crazy. Now you got to ask yourself, well, why was it only one girl? You know what I'm saying? Maybe the, I don't know. I'm, maybe one week I'm going to get showbiz. He was an a and Is it a period where they weren't checking for females? Maybe that's true. But let's get back to you and where you came from. So in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I love the scenery in your videos, by the way. When you Thank shoot you. your videos. Yeah, it's like that everywhere. We got mountains. We got all kinds of Yeah, things. it's so cool. And I, and we don't get to see that, this stuff. Like, you know, I mean, I just started traveling. Like, now I'm not traveling because COVID. But the Internet allows us to connect and see all these different kind of things. So now, what inspired you to get into hip-hop, to start a hip-hop career? Um, for me, I've always been inspired by music in general. Um, it's been a passion. Uh, I've always been inspired just by rappers. My love for music, I feel like, is just my passion, and that's my inspiration. So I finally just wanted to make, you know, stuff that I would wrote down come to life. And mm -hmm. that's when I out my videos and it was something that I realized it made me happy and something that gave me something to look forward to and challenge myself and I guess it just brought me happiness when I did and I kind of found I wouldn't just say a hobby I say I found something that you know really gave me a meaning that like I said makes me happy so I think right. it's just inspiration that keeps me even going day by day so right it's impact on my life yeah that's what's up Shout out to Sesh. I, I see you and you stay healthy also. Shout out to Anna D, another great artist. She's a um, singer and she she um, throws a little rapping in there. She got the best of both worlds. Had okay. her on a few weeks ago. And um, so what artists inspired you, like specific artists? Um, artists, I want to say, let's see, who did I always listen to? For... Uh, should I start off as like female artists or maybe male artists? Yeah, female whoever artists? you like, whoever like whoever, male, female, could be a singer. I have to say, I've always been inspired by like, um, like kind of like old school, Ever, you know, Tupac. But that was mainly stuff that I could relate to. I like to listen to Do or Die. I like Mac Dre, Andre Nicotina, um, all kinds of stuff. So just like old school rappers and stuff like that. Good, like G Funk to it or Boom Bop. Um, I like to big Big Al and all them. They always had like that heat on them lyrics. They have bars and they just go off the top of their head. Um, right. Piano. There's so many people. I just I I can't even say like a category. Um, I like Aaliyah as a hip hop. She was dope. I feel like how she, I just like Aaliyah. She was real dope. The her style gets, was her style was hip hop, even though she was a singer. Yeah. You know, she had the loose pants and all that. You know. Yeah. She had that I, style. She had that style. I love her style. She was she was real dope. Um, Kamaya. And another thing I wanted to go back to. And it's so funny. You keep mentioning Kamaya, but I bet you people don't even know who. I know who she is because I study the culture. But it's a shame that a lot of people, when I mention her or Chica and all these people, they don't even know who they are. And it's a shame that society and, and, and the culture doesn't support these females. And they're so dope. This Kamaya is so dope. You know what I'm saying? But because she don't have her titties out and her ass out, then people ain't checking for you. Exactly. And she's so dope. She's never had to sell herself like that. She's always been herself. She's always yeah. kept her style. Her style is so dope. No one, I don't know anybody that dresses like her nowadays. I think that's so dope. She has her own style. She doesn't sound like anybody. She has her own, like her own sound, her own style. She makes her own music and she stays the same. I think that's dope that she never switches up. And even after music, she's like progressed in music. And I wanted to say like, people always do go after Cardi B. I can't remember what conversation we're going on with who. People are always quick to go after Cardi B. Oh, she's doing this and she's doing that. 
But we got to remember that was like little Kim and so on, even people before her. Exactly. Before her. Exactly. <laughs> Lil' Kim's whole career was provocative. Yeah. Whole career provocative. And people ate it up, like yeah. cooked food yeah. and fried chicken. Yeah, and we were eating it up, exactly. So now when people lash at Cardi B, it's like, that's just the biggest name we know right now. She's running that shit, and that's why people do right. it. She's making her money. She did it right. She was real. She kept it real. She's still, you know, I feel like people just go a lot after her, and there's a lot of people before her, like Little Kim, that were, like, really sexualized in the music game. And I, I feel mm -hmm. like you know, people are so pointing fingers. But it's who they want to point it at. Oh, yeah, you know, she gets a pass. Oh, but he doesn't get a pass. Oh, she gets a pass, but he doesn't get a pass. Like, that type Double of Double standard. It's all right. I don't, I don't think they dislike um, Cardi because or resent her. I think it's more resentment, number one. And I think mm -hmm. that they don't not like her music. I think they don't like the fact that she got to that spot. And a mm -hmm. lot of people couldn't get to that spot. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, 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 it's not an easy task to break through in entertainment. Let's just say that. It's not easy as an actor, a singer, a rapper. It is tough. It's almost like going out, playing the mega millions out here. You get a better chance. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. for her to not only get in, and then they was like, hey, hey, hey oh, God, look, she's trying to rap now. Not only did she get in, they, she made them even madder by going to the top of the charts. Oh. Each one of her records went to the top of the charts. And then on top of that, she started breaking everybody. All these legends records, she's yeah. breaking records. So people's skin was boiling at that point. People despite people's progression. And I think that's crazy because if anything, like especially as females, boost her up. And as males, respect that shit. Like not just put her on, oh, she's doing this. Oh, she's a stripper. She should have stayed doing that. No. She did her thing, and she's doing her thing, and she deserves, you know, like, even her video. So what? That's what she makes. And she's, like, if she's on the number one charts, that's, like, a dream to me. That's inspiration. So when people are like, I want to be like Cardi B, it's not necessarily, oh, I want to go out there, be shaking my butt out there on TV. It's like, you know, I want to be on the number one charts. I want to make it. She was real. She came from nothing, you know, this and that. And mm -hmm. everybody yeah. has a struggle. So she came from her own struggle and shit. She made it. Exactly. And then everybody complains about the sexualized music. Like, oh my God. I, I, I. But I remember that song that um, Snoop and Dre and them had and shit. You know, everybody's like, yeah, you know, they can grade us. They call us hoes. And then when I was in the club and that song came on, you know that song. Bitches ain't got nothing but hoes and chick. And, 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 suck the dead. And, and, and that shit came on. It. They was twirling on the dance floor. It's like you, it was infectious. You know what I'm saying? And you're not listening to the lyrics. It's the beat and the way they put it together. But then, you know, you got to catch yourself because you're like, oh, shit, they calling me a hoe. And I'm like dancing and shit. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that music been there. It been there. Exactly. So now um, tell them where, where they could find your music. What, what do you have out now? You have any music out? Um, I have a lot of music out. On my YouTube, I have some songs on there. You can look me up under Destiny, MC, Lucero, D-E-S-T-I-N-Y, M-C, L-U-C-E-R-O. Um, but a lot of my stuff is on Instagram. I come up with something every Monday. It's a free flow. I put it out there. Um, oh, next that's Monday, cool. Yeah, so this next day is going to be my 45th consistent week that I've been doing this. Wow. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to put that out there. Consistent. Yeah. Make sure y'all go follow me on Instagram so you guys can check that out at destiny.mc.lucero. And it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. If you can Yeah, if you can type it and I'll pin it. Yeah. Now, um do do you have anything like on streaming platforms like Spotify out anything yet? Um not on Spotify or anything, but I am working on a single and um like I said just follow Like what what's why why haven't you done that yet? You haven't had like, a, you want a complete record that you're confident yeah. with before and you now, do that? Yeah, now I found people, or not people, but I found somebody that I can trust with studio time. Because, you know, how people go out there, you can go in there and they'll go and sell your music and stuff. And I feel like I wouldn't want that to happen. Maybe I'm paranoid and stuff. But um, I found somebody that can actually, you know, help me do studio time. And I've never done that before. Um, all these meetings and all this is new to me. I've never been in a studio. So it's going to be new. And oh, 
put out a real single because I have music videos on YouTube, but this is going to be the my first streaming one on Spotify and Apple Music, all that good stuff. But I really wanted to make it perfected and stuff. So like even with my Monday free flows, I work hard to perfect it because I don't want to put something out there and it's, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah, we look at hip hop love says, yes, we definitely going to do something. We definitely going to collab. Most mm -hmm. deaf. He say do yep. some music. Because now you could do everything remote. They could send you the beat. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to get back to Hip Hop Loves. I'm going to tell you something that you said you're paranoid that somebody's going to take your music and put it out. Let me tell you how to prevent that. When I'm writing lyrics and I, and I go to my voice recorder and I put punchlines in all the time when I think of something, then I write down lyrics. I'm getting ready to do, put up a freestyle soon. That I, you know, we're gonna have to wait and see what that is, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's dealing with a topic now. It's gonna be good. But what I do is when I write lyrics, you do you write your lyrics down on what the computer and your phone and notepad or paper um, or, or wherever? Notepad, whatever is by me, but I like to do it on my phone because I read it a certain type of way. You know how sometimes when you spit bars and you want to hit it, like you gotta take your breath sometimes? I write it right. a certain way on my phone. So Okay. But it's always like different ways. So you you write the song, right? Yeah. Then when you write a song, you got a hook, you got the verse. Maybe you throw a bridge in there. A lot of hip hop artists don't use bridge, but some people, you know, do, right? You yep. take that after after you get it set up on what whatever you wrote it down with, then you're gonna take it to the computer. I know you got a computer, or you could do it on your phone, and you type the words in exactly how you're gonna say it in the studio, right? Uh -huh. And you could go you could go online in real time right after I write my lyrics or I write anything. If I write lyrics, I write a treatment for a screenplay or whatever. I go right to guess who? The copyright office in Washington is right online. You could bring them on up. I could send you the link to it and you could just tap in. Oh, oh, the account is free. You do have to pay the copyright each time. But yeah. I copyright my shit before I even fucking leave the house. That shit is copyright. Ain't nobody stealing nothing this way. You know what I'm saying? So you could copyright your shit as soon as you write it. And also, when you type it in a computer, mm -hmm. right? The computer and your phone or wherever you go, it creates a file. And once that file is created, in the details, it'll have a date. So if somebody does steal something to you from you, you have a file. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have yep. to worry about that. People ain't that they'll they'll steal little bits and lines. Like we had Jiggy G. Her she had lines stolen from her by um Kaya, the neck and back girl. You know, they got into it a little bit about that. She stole uh -huh. like four consecutive lines from her. You know what I'm saying? That's People will take bits and pieces, but there is nobody I seen. Well, they do have cases where people stole whole songs of people, but it's people that they thought would never come out. You know what I'm saying? And they do have cases of stars like getting their stuff stolen. But if you go right to the copyright office, which is right online, and you could mm -hmm. copyright your shit, it takes like 10 minutes. You type it in, and then you say it in a, um, your voice recorder. And then you have that file, and you upload your saying your rhymes, right? And you yeah. upload it into the copyright, and you pay your money. Boom! They send you certificate. I got all my certificates of everything I ever write it because I copyright it off the rip, so nobody gets a chance to take shit. And if they do take it, well, hell, I'll make more money than putting it out. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Yep, you know what I'm saying? So take it if you dare. So that's how you do it. So don't be afraid to record your stuff because of that. Because, you know, we, we all are artists. We all are susceptible of getting our, our uh, stuff stolen or whatever. You just got to protect your neck. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And you're good. So, you know, you, you, you could Google the copyright link. If you can't find it, I'll give it to you. You know what I'm saying? If you... Uh, do write a song or lyrics that you want to copyright, you could call me and I'll walk you on through it. You know what I'm saying? And once I walk you through it once, you're going to have it. You're going to be able to do it like clockwork every time. And then you can also copyright like uh, a, a compilation of songs for one price. You could copyright, I think one is like, how much is it now, Dion? Is it like $60, 35 
I just did something. I don't remember the price. I just be copywriting shit. But yeah, you can protect your neck. You know what I'm saying? So when you do do that song and you find a studio and you don't have to like worry about that. You could worry about being an artist. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM you and we can go back or I'll call you or whatever is easy. And we can talk yeah. About like, and and oh, learn the business side too. Learn the business side. Like it's now being an artist is not only being an artist now. It's about learning the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's $65 a copyright. It used to be $35, but now it's $65. I guess they caught on that everybody is, wants to be a hip-hop artist. They said, we're going to raise this price. Raise yeah, it went up. Yeah, but it's worth it because you got to protect yep. your neck. You know what I'm saying? And then another thing is what I did was I trademarked my name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I spent a good G, but nobody could be Miss Knockout but me. And if they do try... Once again, I'll make them more money by you trying than I will coming out as an artist. So go ahead and do it. So, yeah, you just protect your neck. You know, learn that from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So now you haven't recorded a song yet. Um, have you did any shows or open mics? I haven't done no shows, no open mics. Um, I, haven't did, I haven't done anything yet. I've just been posting my so stuff on social media. And I really didn't think that it was going to blow up like it did. And so far, I've gotten nothing but positive comments and, like, you know, compliments and stuff. So I was like, well, shit, then I'm going to do this music thing. So right. I hadn't done a show or anything. And once I do put out a single and a mixtape and stuff, I want to bring that. I just don't want to go to the show and just have one or go and do it half ass. When I do something, right. I want to expect things and go out there and make it my best. So I think that's where it's, like, stop, like you know, putting me in a place where I haven't done a show yet. And also all this that's going on. But I, I would always be down. Like somebody's like, hey, you want to get on the stage? Most definitely I'll get on the stage and do it. So I'm always open. Right. To I don't know how because I'm really shy. But when it comes to music and stuff, I just hop on. I just do You it. open so, up. Yeah. And that's something like I think that comes with like the passion and the inspiration is because I'm really shy or I have a hard time talking with people. But as soon as it comes with music or it's something with music or going and rapping in front of everybody, all of a sudden it just like clicks and I'm good to go. That's your element. Right. Yeah. So in, in, in Albuquerque, right? How is the music scene? Are there open mics to go to? Are there shows and then you just haven't gone to them? Or is it limited? Um, a lot of shows that I go to are already like big rap artists like Tech Nine, all those, you know, Bone Thugs and Harmony. I haven't been to a local rap like a concert or anything. I just haven't. A lot of times... Um, they don't really do big shows. The only people that we have out here that are really big is the Real Kings. Y'all can go follow them on Instagram. Um, they do their thing out here. They've done shows with Kevin Gates, The Baby, all that stuff. So they open and stuff. So I thought that was big. Um, yeah. I, you know, there's there's a like good handful. But a lot of times, um, I feel like people don't put their talent out here. Put right. their talent out, out here. So I'm just trying to... I, when people are like, you're from Albuquerque, New Mexico? Hell yeah, I'm representing too. People right. are, they'll be from here and they say, oh, no, I'm from Vegas. Oh, no, I'm from California. And I always think to myself, you should But be why do they say that? Because that's nearby and they want to rep that there? I don't know. I, I always, that always tripped me out. And me, I'll always rep Albuquerque, New Mexico. If anything, you should be proud. You should be proud of where you, you were born. I'm proud to be. Of here. course. Of course. And plus, you could, put, you could be the one that put them on the map. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you could be the one. I mean, there's other people that came from there, but, you know, now prominently, you know, you don't hear of too many or whatever. Like, you could be the one to put them on the map. So you want to rep your, of course, rep your town. And, like, don't be ashamed. I'd be like South Jamaica all the time. Look, Farmers yeah. Boulevard, you know and what I'm like, saying? Exactly. And like we're saying today on the Zoom call, we're always saying the thing is, is that people will support. Um, there's just not a lot of support out here. People don't want to see you progress, and which is sad. And it's like, not, it's not the best. It's like a bitter taste to when you say it, because those are your people, you know, but like we were talking about is they just don't want to support. They have, right. coach, but they don't want to put you on. They say, Hey, you're dope. You know, okay. You know what, well, what's up? You know, I've known you for a long time. And I think a lot of it is like hip hop. Or I can't remember who said it is. People just don't want to see you progress. I can't remember. Who right. Said it, but they just don't. And they I just, think that's everywhere. That's everywhere. Yeah. And New York is the crab barrel capital of the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got all these 
things here, all these open mics, all these people, all these executives, all these DJs. I know, you know how many people I know with mad, I, I, was, I said that in a meeting, the same mm -hmm. thing. You know how yeah. many people I know that know, got mad contacts, know mad record labels, know everybody. And they made sure that they didn't help me. They made sure, they went out of their way not to help me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My I people see. don't repost my stuff. I could go through my people's page. Not one time did they re... I got no capping out. I got the new song, Step Up. No capping just did 135,000. Why? Because my little Twitter fingers promoted it to people like Moosey, Moose, Music Moosey, over in Italy. I didn't concentrate on the people around me because in my song, I have a line. You know what I'm saying? Strangers are fans and haters are people you know. No cap. People are phony. Always get to the dope. No cap. The people around you are not going to support you because, oh, you, I'm not going to uh, repost your stuff so you could be all famous. And then here I am flipping fries and burgers at McDonald's and shit, struggling and shit to make a dollar and ends me. And then you're going to be off on tour, whatever. Hell, I'm not fucking supporting her. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to act like she don't even, her and her music doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. So, that's not the fan base that you promote to the people around you. You got to, like, do what you're doing now. You got the internet in your age. I've seen both stages. I've seen internet age. I've seen grassroots age um, stage where you went out on foot. You know what I'm saying? But you yeah. got the luxury that you could cut on and open up a computer screen and then boom, you would miss knockout in New York. You know what I'm saying? You're over here in Chicago with so-and-so. You could go around the world. And if you really know what you're doing, then you can mess around and get it popping yeah. by not targeting, like concentrating on those because you have, you, it's like beating a dead horse. I got tired of asking them. I stopped asking them. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like no use. You know, eat, I said it's one of two things. Either they think I'm whack as hell or they just don't want me to see me get ahead. It's either one or the other. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't waste your time concentrating on that. You got to concentrate on who fucks with you. You know what I'm saying? If you get with this group and they're saying, oh, giving you information and saying do this and do that, then that's where you need to be. That's your tribe. You know what I'm saying? If you're over here and they like this, I ain't, I'm not, then that's not your tribe. You know what I'm saying? No, Breaking the New is on here. They have a virtual showcase where you could perform from your living room, bedroom, take your pick, and you could perform and it's going to go around the world. You know what I'm saying? So you can follow his page. I'll send it to you after we, we get yeah. off. You can hit him up and you can perform. You you know, you, you may not have songs in the studio, but you got something to perform. I've seen your videos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got material. You know? And yeah. that's how you start. That's how you get onto stuff. That's how producers say, hey, let me send you this beat. Or let me sing this song. You know, that's how you, you progress. You know what I'm saying? You don't progress by concentrating on people that don't fuck with you. And I made that mistake for a long time. Sometimes you're loyal to the wrong motherfuckers. And you need to get up out of there and go into the world and find people like Music Musi that's in Italy. I was um, yeah. on this guy's um, Instagram. He was in Nepal. You know, he played my stuff. He was like, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like these are the people who are going to gravitate to you. The people mm -hmm. around you is like, I'm sitting here struggling. The kids is, is crying and shit. And then she want me to post what? So she could go off on tour and be eating caviar and shit and, and, and saying... Get the green M&Ms and shit. This is how these motherfuckers think. This is how they think. You know what I'm saying? That's their mentality. So it's, it's the crab in the barrel. And also, opposites attract. When you go out of your city, once you get out, once I went to Atlanta, oh my God, they genuinely loved what I was doing. They genuinely was like, wow. Like they were like, I never heard a girl rap like that in a minute and shit. You know what I'm saying? Went yeah. to Cali to the revolt. Mad love out there. I met people that I still stay in touch with. We still go back and forth. You know what I'm saying? People in Atlanta, to me, they're more, they're more um, genuinely interested in showing you love. You know what I'm saying? People in New York, it's like, they, they, you know, they like, you know, I'm not helping you do shit. You know what I'm saying? But then in New York, you would be surprised all the resources are here. 
Yep. You know what I'm saying? All the offices, all the execs, everything. You would think that if you're from New York, you would have it instantly popping. But nope. Nope. Because it's difficulties. It's difficulties. It's the mentality is, is crazy. Yep. So. And for out here, we don't have a lot of like, you know, actual professional buildings and stuff. People have their own labels and stuff, but nothing's real big out here. So people always have to travel to California or travel from here. But like you said, this virtual thing, you can make it happen. Things can happen. Right. And, you know, the, um, what do you call those waves? Whatever, the yeah, beats, beats through the thing. And um, you could do it that way. So it's not like necessarily, oh, you have to do this this way. You have to do it. And I think that's like implicated in people's minds nowadays is that you have right. to do it. And I think like the platform, like general setup for female MCs, that's getting uh, attention. You know, we're getting attention from all over the world. It's not local. You know, people, the more local, the less love you get, it seems like. Because out here, there's no support, which is right. fine because I'm still going to support. That's not going to change my mind. I still like the music. I still fuck with them. I still support them. And that'll never stop. But when people don't go support you, um, I think like Renee was saying, we can't take it personal because right. like, that's that's them. And mm -hmm. like, we, can't, we can't let that affect us. And that shouldn't be in our circle. And we need we need to focus on the people that, you know, do enjoy our music. There's so many people that I've met that enjoy my music. And I'm so thankful because people are, you know, I wasn't out there. People, I didn't have people that was like, oh, that was dope. There was people that were just like staying quiet and then kind of right. just like fading away. And now... I was kind of spread to different places and people are like, oh, that's dope. We don't have nothing out here and stuff. And I'm like, well, thank mm -hmm. you. Because any little support, I don't care if it's one like on one video, any little support, that's a lot of support to me. Because right. you know, one that can make, I don't know, to me, like a little support is a lot of support. Little things can be big things for me. And people always want to be like, oh, I, I want I want Drake's attention. Oh, I want, you know, this person's attention. I want record deals first. I want thousands on deck before I sign anything. And you got to be cheap. Right. Into this is going to be a whole 360 deal. You owe it back. They change you. You can't put out what you want to put, your lyrics and stuff. So people are so quick. Girl, that's a whole nother show. We're going to get showbiz on here to talk about that. <laughs> that's a whole nother show. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and um, record labels is like right now, record labels is having a hard time because of the streaming thing. And then with the internet, you know, you could go independent. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of people could go independent and still do their thizzle, you know. But the problem is you don't have the marketing dollars for uh, promotions and marketing. You don't have those money for it. And that's the problem with being independent. That's kind of the roadblock. The labels, they hold the key. They hold the key to the marketing and promotions dollars and getting out to the masses. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They hold that key. You know what I'm saying? So as an independent artist, if you notice, a lot of artists are independent and a lot of them are independent to a certain point and then they get with a label. You know what I'm saying? Which is also kind of smart though because if you're smart about it and you're a good negotiator, if you get to a certain point, and you build yourself up and you own all your shit, then you get more leverage. Okay. So look, I don't know. You need to go back, right? I don't know if you've seen this or not. You need to watch the Master P um, documentary. Did you watch that? I didn't. The Master P documentary? Yeah, no. they have a documentary. Um, they have a whole series of it. They got the Rough Riders. Um, they got Master P. And in the Master P documentary, um, it talks about how Master P went to the labels, right? And negotiated an 80 20 deal, 80%, 20% deal. Guess who got 80% and who got 20? He uh, got 80%, he got 80%, and the record label got 20, 20%. He did deals that artists still can't do to this day. They still can't do to this day. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a great negotiator, and you get to a certain level, partnering with the label is not that bad because sometimes you need to partner with people to get you to that next level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so don't get the idea of, oh, labels are all bad. They're going to, no, they, they do that stuff, but 
It's up to you and how you maneuver and who you get with and what um, labels you get with. Some labels ain't on that where they change you and this and that. I don't hear Cardi. I don't hear Cardi B change um, complaining about. Oh my God, they're trying to make me do this. Oh my God, they're trying to whitewash me. Oh my God, they don't want me. I don't hear her complaining. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what deal you take, and if you're not thirsty. And you get and take the right deal and don't take the first thing offered to you. And then you build your numbers up. You own your name. A lot of people, they don't own their name. When you sign that contract, they own your name and your likeness. Meaning that if you leave that label, they can still own your name. And then you got to go off and change your name to Bobo or them or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't own your name. So if you have your ducks in a row, and then you grind as an indie artist and shit, and then your numbers are big, and then you have a fan base and all that, you could go in there and negotiate a good deal and then take it to a next level. Because you're going to have to give up a piece of your ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And once you stay independent, you're only going to get to a certain plateau. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking as I'm talking to you, what independent artist without a label went to a level of a Kanye or even Cardi B or Meg The Stallion. Do you know any? Type it in. Somebody knows one, type it in. Showbiz, you know one, type it in. Thank you. Hey, what's up, Guala? Uh, 2 Chains. Okay. So 2 Chains. But Guala, 2 Chains is signed with a label now, right? Is 2 Chains with a label now? Yeah, and all that information okay. is good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm new to this. So Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott was with a label, Moosey. She was with a label. She was with Timberland and all that. I, I think, was she with Black Ground? She was with a, she, Missy Elliott was definitely with a label. It's not too many artists independently that um, reach that level because the labels are the gatekeepers to a lot of things like awards, red carpets, like winning awards. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're the gatekeepers to that stuff. So in order for you to do certain stuff, you kind of got to partner with a label at a certain entity. So don't get yourself boxed in like, oh, no, label. Oh, my God, it's bad. You know what I'm saying? Because you might reach a certain point and, um, okay, yeah, Master P, right, he did. He did it independent. Master P is a, um, one that I could think of that did it independently. And then when he did get with a label, he gave them 20% and he took 80%. He was running shit. I haven't known nobody to do that yet. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody is so thirsty that to even get a record deal, they're so happy. They're like, you know what I'm saying? They're so happy. Like Atlantic Records own meeting. Oh, sign here. Like, wait, take it to a lawyer. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wait for the time to come and keep building yourself. And like you said, uh, make yourself big. Like, you got to work hard for that. Nobody's just going to hand you a good record deal. And like business-wise, like you said, I'm trying to remember like the, how you said it. Um, you could negotiate your price. Like, if you're good enough and they want you like Cardi B, like, they just, they want you and you're like a huge profit, you could name your price. Like, you name the price and you go through that. And like, that's where it comes, you know, like, how good of a business person are you? Can you be? And how hard do you work? And that's, that's right. True. Yeah, he said Dame Dash and Jay Z did a great deal for Rock. Yeah, they stay independent for a little bit, and then they got with uh, uh, um, um, under a label. You know what I'm saying? And you know, but they had negotiation power. And us as women, you know, in any field, us as women, you know, we always going to get lesser pay than than the male counterparts. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it is in the executive, in the workforce. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I don't know how to pinpoint it or whatever, but we got to be extra good at negotiating. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes, um, and I've even heard stories about managers would sign you to them, right? Then the manager would go get a deal at Epic Records, right? They'll go get a label imprint at, at Epic, right? Now they have you still signed to them. So now you sign to the management, but the management is also a record label. It's called double dipping. You know what I'm saying? And now the manager is signed to the label. So the manager is getting his management fee, 
And then he's giving you whatever he wants, the crumbs he want to give you from the record deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we as people are so thirsty and so bright eyed and bushy tail and everything that glitters is gold ish. You know what I'm saying? We run and we sign these deals and then we start crying later. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I feel like if if a uh, 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 executive puts a, a a contract in front of you, right, and you don't read it and you don't get it looked over and you sign it because you're thirsty, me, I don't I don't feel bad for a person like that because you knew what you was doing when you're doing it. Now you want to come back and cry. You didn't handle your business. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If, if they're gonna present it to you because it's business to them. If we could find a lemon, we gonna squeeze it. That's business, and that's the exact. What's up, love my life? How you doing, friend? If if they get a lemon, they're gonna squeeze it. That's their job. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Squeezing lemons. You know, so our our people need to stop being so thirsty and stop jumping at everything that looks like gold and that glitters. Because when you get in and all that glitter and gold wears off you and you saying, hey, my pocket got rabbit ears and shit. Now you want to start crying. Yep. You know, lawyers are expensive. That's another thing. A lot of people, they might not have a, a money for a lawyer. Right now, yep. let me ask you a question. If you got a record deal tomorrow and you didn't have a, a money for a lawyer. Would you how how would you go about getting that contract looked at? Um, first thing is first, I'd ask for time, especially to look over the contract. I definitely wouldn't sit there because I would feel like I was rushed, and I would I would ask for you know like some time to look it over. No, they'll give you time to look yeah. over it, but the problem is contracts are on in lawyer language. Do you understand lawyer language? I don't, but I would say right. I would lawyer i would see i would start investing some way to get a lawyer because either way you're gonna need either you're gonna get a lawyer now to handle it the right way or you're gonna need one later to handle all the shit that they put you through okay I well i'm getting ready to tell you how to get a lawyer all right and a lot of people don't know this okay you get a contract you don't have money for a lawyer i heard a lot of artists say well i have no 170 dollars an hour 200 dollars an hour to pay for a lawyer Okay, that's understandable. A lot of people don't have that shit laying around. But you can contact Volunteer Lawyers Association of the Arts. Volunteer Lawyers Association of the Arts, right? They'll send you a form. As a matter of fact, I got to fill out my form. I, mean, I just reminded myself because, but I already got my contracts looked it over by a friend. I have a friend that, that um, um, some people that I work with have lawyers. So it was like, oh, don't, you know, go through all that. We'll look at it. It was a license, um, a branding company agreement. I just signed with a branding company. Um, Volunteer Lawyers Association of the Arts, all the artists that's on this thread, okay? They are bar uh lawyers actual lawyers bar association lawyers that's coming out of school they went to college you know how you're a doctor and then you go for your internship in the hospital you yeah. know what i'm saying you go to your undergrads and all that that's mm -hmm. what these lawyers are right okay. you fill out the application um i think that you pay like a hundred dollars or something for a year or a one-time fee you know what I'm saying? I could send you the information. And you get lawyers to look at your shit. Hello? So you yeah. could get a lawyer for $100 to look at your shit. Yes. Miss Knockout told you that. Thank me fucking yeah. later. Yeah, I will thank you now and later. And right. So awesome. if you don't have it there, if you don't have it there, um, I'm sure that the bar social, that, that is in every state. And if you don't have it there, I'm sure you could connect it with the one in New York. And get the same, you know, results. Okay. Volunteer Lawyers Association of the Arts. You fill out a form. Um, you do got to be under a certain fin financial level. Was okay. you don't have money for a lawyer, right? You can't have fifty thousand dollars in the bank. They're gonna be like, motherfucker, you can go get you a lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like so, you gotta be in under a financial thing, you know everybody's not working now. It's a good time to fill that out, artists. Now's the time to sign up with the volunteers, lawyers. So that way, when you get a contract, 
You can't sing that song that, oh, I, I didn't have a lawyer look at it. Nah. It's always a loophole to do shit. Volunteer Lawyers Association of the Arts. $100. Boom. All your contracts looked over. Thank me later. You've taught me so many loopholes since like the la the first one today right now. I'm learning so I'm learning a lot. You taught us a lot of a lot of a lot of loopholes. Yeah. Tell you that yeah, what's up Kenny? Let's see what Kenny says. Some people feel like record labels is the end all be all. It's not. People also don't realize that sometimes an advance includes your recording budget in it. Right. Right. People get a million dollar advance. They say, oh, Bobo and the Fools and them, they got a million dollar advance at Epic. That million dollar advance is like a student loan. It might be worse than a student loan. Why? Because every move you make, they're going to recoup it out of that advance. Every hotel you stay with, every car that they call, every time they had to get you security, Dang. everything. So by the time they, they roll that paper out, when it's time to get paid, they roll this long paper out. Vroom, you know how you roll the receipt and it goes Vroom, on the floor? And then they say, I thought I was supposed to get this much. And they go, no, we have to collect all this money back. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, you know, they get that budget and they go out and buy chains and whips. And then they look around and they broke. And they got to spend all that, take, take, pay all that money back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, he's right. Love my life is right. It's not the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's good. That's good. So yeah, make sure you follow um Breaking the New. And you know, when you get a song, of course, done, you can send them a song. But as far as performance, you could get with them and then you could perform live. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you know, any artists on here, follow Breaking the New and and perform. So now, where do you see yourself in like five years? Uh, see myself in five years. Um, I want to say just like keep on putting like as much content as I put. Like I want to put out more content than I am right now. I want to focus on like mixtapes, albums, and just continue to really push myself and challenge myself. Um, I don't ever want to like set a standard of like where I want to be and stuff. When I get to that standard, I want to like go outside of the box. Okay, I did that. Now I want to do something new maybe like start learning beats or doing something just keep on doing something with music so i really do you have your own studio in your house do you have your uh, own setup okay uh, that yeah. might be something that you need to look into too i should have did that a long time ago but i wasn't concentrating on that um my friend onadi she had her studio set up almost damn near since i knew her met her you know what i'm saying so she was on the right track with that i just got the bright idea because with the covid i said look you know I want to be able to lay my shit down, send it out, get it mixed and mastered, so I don't have to leave my house. But I, that's something that I should have been did. It just clicks on me, like, you know. But hey, better late than never. You know what I'm saying? And then you just sit there, you learn it. YouTube, university. Yep. Yeah, we're trying YouTube. to... We have a place where we could do it in our house where we're going to build, like, a studio and stuff working on the equipment, getting everything set up, and really researching what we get so we don't buy a bunch of bullshit, you know? That's why I was paying attention. We are in the Zoom call today, and um, what was his name? The one that was uh, making the beats and stuff? Oh, yeah, he showed the, the his, his equipment. Yeah, he showed all that. So but, okay, but here's another jewel. Sweetwater.com. Onadi put me onto that. Shout out to Onadi. Sweet water.com war word one word sweetwater.com they got everything on there and then they got a representative that you call and they'll make you a bundle catering to what you want to do okay i just want to do vocals um i'm not going to do beats yet then they'll ask you do you plan on doing beats later because you don't want to buy equipment that is not good for making beats too and then you say hey i want to do beats and now you got to order more shit you know what I'm saying? So you decide what you want to do, and then you talk to the representative, and they'll put you together a bundle of everything you need. I think my bundle came to about $700 for everything. And then uh, um, the controller board was a little expensive, but they explained to me, like, when you get the cheap ones, you know, they don't have the extra 
thing that you could press like when you're recording and you're recording yourself you have to keep pressing the button yourself you gotta do everything yourself so you gotta stop and press the button and then jump in there you know what i'm saying so you got to get the 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 um board that you have the button that you could press right near you and then um you know go right into it you know but a lot of people record their own stuff doja cat she recorded her shit in her bedroom you know what i'm saying uh, Chloe Times, Hallie, they record their shit in their garage. You'd be surprised. Yeah. I think that girl, she's big. I don't know if it's true, but I think I've heard it. I think Billie Eilish does that. It's like her and her brother. Is that who it is? Yeah. yeah. She does her thing. And she has like a cool voice. It's like she doesn't sound like everything. It's almost like, I don't know. I think that's dope. I don't listen to a lot of right. music. Listen to it. She always sounds dope. That's one thing. She's She's a good musical artist. She and her, then, she shit. Mm -hmm. and then after you lay down your vocals, right? And so say they send you a beat. Hip hop loves them. They send you a beat, right? You got your own studio. You you put the the um the music in. You lay your vocals down, and then you don't even have to leave your house. Once again, they have uh, uh, a naughty type to type in sight in that they only have people that mix and master stuff. You could get your stuff mixed and mastered for like two hundred dollars. Nice. And it varies. You know what I'm saying? Some cheaper, some are more. And the site that Onadi's gonna type, they have award winning producers that got Grammys on there. You know what I'm saying? So and then my guy, um uh Louis uh uh Sabar Tanio, he did no capping. He used to work at the famous D and D studios with Premier and Jay-Z and everybody came through and um, he has a studio and you can send him the stuff and he'll mix and master it for like around 200 you know what I'm saying so I could send you to my guy you know I what I'm saying oh. yeah so you could do stuff now you don't even have to leave your house there it goes soundbetter.com I'm gonna screenshot that even though I talk to a naughty all the time I'm gonna screenshot it sorry soundbetter.com soundbetter.com you could go in there and you could send them your shit and you could get it mixed and mastered they send it back to you you could say i like this i don't like this this sounds crazy let me change this you send it back they vamp it up and then boom you got your joint you never step foot out the house you know what i'm saying you yeah. start now you're just beginning so if you start now in a few years you'll be nothing to play with you be pushing out a song a day or some shit. Well, yeah. you got to have that mix and mastering money, you know, that adds up, but hey. That's investment. You got to invest in order to, you know, get something back. Music, that's one of the biggest things is to right. invest in your art because, you know, sports and stuff, you work, you, you use your body to invest in that. And in music, right. you use your body, but you also, you know, you can't pay your way in the NFL. You have to be good at football. So like in music, some people suck at making music, and but they paid their way in there. They got all the stuff that they need, needed. They knew the right people and stuff. And then, but right. like I said, well, you got to invest, and you'll get there. You might be investing, and you're like, damn, I don't know why I'm putting thousands of dollars. But one day, and if you're doing it, the way, like you said, you know, the copyright, all that stuff, it's all going to pay off. But you ain't right. going to back. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, so it was good talking to you, man. It was a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> and, um, I got all that, all those websites down. Um, I can't remember what else I was going to get. I think you were going to send me the breaking news. N breaking new? Yeah, breaking the new. Look. Breaking the new. I'm going to. I'm oh, right. right there. I see it. Okay. Yeah. Check that breaking out. underscore the underscore new. I'll send it to you, too. Yeah, invest in yourself is really saying you believe in yourself because you wouldn't right. invest in that you're not going to believe in. You just push it to the side. So, right. you know, yeah, invest in what you believe in because you do. You push. I feel like that even pushes you more to inspire you. Okay, now I put something into it. Now I got to put my all into it. Now I put my money yeah. into it. I got to put my all into it. Otherwise, you'd you be put it in, but you're just wasting money if you don't do nothing with it. Right. You'd be surprised how many artists don't uh, invest in themselves. They don't want to pay for everything. They think everything's a scam. 
You know what I'm saying? And they don't realize, like, you got to pick and choose what you invest in. It is a lot of scams out here. It is a lot of pages. Like, you see those little pages that hit you up and say, oh, I'll promote you on my page. And a lot of them get those fake views. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They get they put it up there and they got 30,000 likes. And then it, and it's actually only pro probably 10 or 20 likes and shit. You know what I'm saying? So you're paying for something. And then you're watching yourself and, you know, with, with a couple other people. So you do got to, like, do your homework and watch what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? Go to YouTube a lot. And um, YouTube, one thing they're really good at is them giving reviews. They'll tell you if something's bad and they will tell you if something's good. You could definitely find that out. So a lot of artists, don't they don't do their homework. You know what I'm saying? So... Yep, and that's true. Um, and that's another thing somebody mentioned. They're inspired and stuff, and that's what I feel like. And I'm inspired by you as hard as you work and stuff. Like all that hard work and shit. All those people that were like, "Ah, eh, you know, turn the cheek," they're gonna regret that pretty big and stuff. And be inspired and don't give up. And we we're talking about something in the Zoom call today where um, we had something and it didn't get likes or any views, so you delete it. Don't delete any of your work. Um, there's been times where I wrote something, I put it out in the week before, or the week before I got like 17 shares, which I've never got, you know, like boom, like that, uh, 55 right. likes. And then the next week it went down to 15, 10, whatever. And I thought to myself, I could either go and I could just, oh, give up or I could stop doing what I'm doing. But instead I was like, okay, what could I, what, what did I, what could I have improved in? So I went, I sat there. I, you know, really looked at what I wrote about and stuff. And it's not about that. It's just maybe that spoke to a lot more people. So it's not like, you know, something's not good enough. It's just what's going to speak to other people. Because one day somebody's going to look back and be like, dang, I can relate to that. And right. if I stopped for all the times where I felt like I wasn't good enough or this and that, I wouldn't be doing music. But I know, you know, that it that it is good enough. I have to love myself enough to love my work that I put out. And that's right. why it so much so i try to inspire people don't give up and don't throw away right. that you have don't if you feel like it's not good enough it is good enough just people mm -hmm. don't it. it is good enough you are good enough and that's what i promote so much is like for mental health is love yourself um don't give up really just i, I really try to focus on um just people wanting to be inspired and keep on going that there's a meaning in life and people will love you for you just just wait like in the beginning, nobody was showing love, but now I'm getting love and we're talking about local love. There's going to be people that you don't even know that are going to gonna be like, oh, that's so cool. Whether it's a drawing, uh, music or whatever, somebody's going to be like, that's dope. And I like that about you. So don't, right. ever, you know, short and stuff. I, I used to mm -hmm. think, you know, you know, I'm going I'm to, I might just give this up. Maybe I'm not doing too good. But then I look at it and I kind of just break it up and I, I kind of just push myself to do better and stuff. So I, I always tell people right when I feel like I'm going to give up, boom, I put out the best shit, best stuff ever. You know, like if I'm performing, boom, I finally got it. And it was worth it of not giving up because the second you right. give up, you never know what you could have had. Right. You can't can't um, force that enough, you know, like say that enough, I should say. So. Right. Yeah, it's a lot of people on my journey that was doing it, and now they got family, kids. You know, life kicks in. You know what I'm saying? They look at me, they're like, you still going? It's like, I don't know. I just have this undying passion that won't die. Like, society says, hey, never give up. And then after you're 30, they're like, give up. Give up, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, <laughs> you, you got to do you. You got to do you and what you feel in your heart and what you feel comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Nobody makes no rules in this game. Like, uh, hip hop loves, uh, the other, uh, um, homeboy, what's his name? Damn, I have like a brain fabulation with the equipment, with I the movie. I can't he, he was saying on, it, it, he said, if I tell you Stevie Wonder was, was, uh, should stop making music. Do you think that he should stop making music? Like, hell no. Michael Jackson, if he was here, who, who would be crazy enough to say, Oh, yeah, Michael, you need to go sit down now. You know what I'm saying? Nobody going to be saying that. So, yeah. you know, you follow your own rules and you do you. Yeah. You know, because the public, yep. only thing the public cares about is, is does she got bars? If you got bars, they ain't going to care about nothing else. <laughs> Believe me. You got a hit record, 
They ain't going to care about nothing else. Only only people who's going to care about that shit is the people around you that that came up and watched you on the, on the grind. They the only ones that's going to be caring and saying little stupid shit. It be the people around you. Yep. You know, I, I told somebody the other day, I said, um, my video, um, no capping, ain't have no likes until I told, uh, sent messages to my friends and say, hey, my video's up, check it out. And then now it got dislikes and shit. I'm like, that shit ain't have no dislikes until I told my friends. <laughs> ain't yeah, that a like, bitch? <laughs> yeah, like, on, my, on my Facebook, you know, and I, none of my friends, they, they some haters. They don't, they don't like it. But my mom shares it on her Facebook. My mom's watching right now. It's Francis. She shares it, and it starts popping. Everybody starts liking it and shit. What it is is that she sends it and like you said, the circle that we should have and focus on the people that do love us and want us to succeed, they go and like all of our stuff and that's what matters. And then I go to my page and I'm like, well, what the heck's going on, you know? But it's not right. it's not those people. So I would just say, you know, it's all about like, you have to send it to people. It shouldn't be that way. They should, they, mm -hmm. I know they see it. People are on Facebook. People are constantly on Instagram. They see it. So you shouldn't be like, hey, you know, like, go check this out. Because then I feel like they think it's an obligation that they have to do so. Right. That's why I stop. I stop. Uh, I don't pressure them. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, if they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. But yeah. if, if I get it popping and I'm opening up in Madison Square Gardens, don't be con con for contacting me for the perks. You know what I'm saying? Because then yeah. they want to contact you for the amenities and the perks and shit. Oh, no, hell no. You won't go. Okay? Because you mm -hmm. should have been there when we were shooting in the gym. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll go around and talk about, oh, yeah, she switched up. I, I, I. No, yeah. she ain't switch up. You know what I'm saying? You didn't post up. So now post out. You ain't repost shit. You, ain't, you wasn't shooting with me like that. But when you get it popping, then they want all the perks. Oh, yeah, we're going to go backstage. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to be right out there at the ticket booth. How you well, feel? Fine going to support since you couldn't support them and that's mm -hmm. putting on people and saying hey you know, let's do this and for them to turn the eye on me i'm like all right that's cool you know because there wasn't somebody that was like hey des um here you know i have this microphone hey des um i got these connections i went um i wasn't doing i didn't even have a microphone i was going and talking in a, a an ipad and i was just doing music like that i do it in my room i have like a little microphone my mom got me that microphone and uh, that's oh. what we've been using that. It's like a little, you know, like the stage microphones. But I, right. what, like I said, it is what you make it. And one day, you know, when we do do that studio, I'm just going to pop it out. And I'll feel more comfortable putting something out that I know I actually love with the singles and stuff. And I feel like once I do get that equipment, it's just going to go up. Because waiting on people, it's it's frustrating. Because they'll kind of right. hold it in their hand like, oh, okay, she's waiting on me to do this. Cool. <laughs> But if you do it yourself, you're like, okay, I could put this out. And Tanya, the one that you met today, mm -hmm. she's real good with all that, like producing and all that. So we could, like you said, getting your way to an actual label to where you can negotiate and all that stuff. It takes work right. it happen overnight. Anybody that says it happens overnight, you had to work till that night that it happened. Overnight. Right. So, right. Yeah. And that's, that's so funny. Like when people get it popping. People think that, oh, yeah, they just came out of nowhere. And meanwhile, they done grinded for like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, it was nice talking to you on nice. conversations with a rap chick. <laughs> I know. You know we what I'm saying? Hours and stuff. Yeah. 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 For some reason, Facebook doesn't chop me at the neck, they let me live. I don't know. I think it might be um, also because I'm not playing any music. I think when you play the music, they chop you. I don't know how that goes, but for some reason, they let me go. I don't know. Well, we could but try yeah, I'll get it popping on Facebook. We could try it. Um, we could try it. if you want to go live on this one day. I'll share this. Oh show yeah, you know Facebook is um is stopping music. Did you yeah. did you see that? I couldn't share the links. I was trying to share the links to War Stories when I was on when I went on War Stories Radio, and it was stopping all the links. We had to text message people the links because it was completely stopping. See? I had to go around away like loopholes just to get that on there and post it. And then it it, it didn't say anything. It just said view post. So there's right. 
things in there. So I'm glad that there's um, like Instagram that we could still have and still used to go live. Right. Um, they, they, they're cutting people off or they're controlling like who they want or what they want. They want people to pay to right. advertise and stuff. They want money. They're money, money. Mm -hmm. And, and they, I noticed they have a DJ section. So, you know, once they seen D, D Nice commanded so many eyes and stuff like that, the light bulbs start going off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I see they created a DJ section because all the DJs is getting on live DJing. They got DJs that DJ all night. DJ Mo's, Easy Mo B. I went to sleep and woke up. He was still DJing. I said, you still on here? Breaking the new, you still in here? Let me see a breaking the news in here. I'm going to bring him on. Get your wig off the lamppost, breaking the news. <laughs> that's, that's our joke because sometimes when you're on Instagram and people want to bring you in on live, sometimes you home chilling, your hair's flying up and down, looking like all crazy. And then they press the request and then you like decline because if I come on, I'm going to really scare you. You'd be like, ah! What up, y'all? Ah! Got crusts on your shit, got some Doritos on your lip. Yep. Wake up yeah. Or something, or you're Where's breaking the new? Are you still in here? Showbiz, you still in here? He must have left. Where you go, Showbiz? I'm bring I'm gonna give you a dose of your own medicines. Get in here, get in this live. <laughs> so, so he went to the the um request me one day and sh and I was like I, I, my hair looked crazy I had my makeup on nothing like I ain't gonna dare press that live you ain't gonna catch me slipping <laughs> everybody talking about me screenshotting me for ages and stuff no no how hell no I won't go I think he left yeah I think he left I think he left. Where's breaking the new when you need him? So anyway, see, now I have to get on him. Like, uh-huh, you declined. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, it was great talking to you. It was great talking with you, too. And, and yeah, yeah, keep up the great work. I'm looking forward to hearing some of those songs. You know what I'm saying? When you get them done, I know you're going to kill it. You yeah. know? Letting me know all that information and uh -huh. really not be so paranoid and how to do it because people will say oh yeah well I know how to take care of it just give it to me and I think that's where it's like sketchy because they're real you know like this but you're showing me how to do it you're telling me no this is how you do it the right way and people don't tell you the right information a lot of times and I think a lot of time that's purposeful and this is gonna help I'm gonna use this I'm gonna do my homework on it and I'm gonna put that shit out Right. Yeah, definitely. Keep going and stuff. Create work. To, and then you're going to um, do songs. You're going to evolve. You know what I'm saying? You might not get that hit record right off the bat, but it's going to come if you keep working. You know what I'm saying? It's going to come. And then also when you get that uh, record, invest in it and spend a little time working the record. Don't do one record and then put that to the side and you offer another record. Because when you give the DJs too much records, they get confused. And mm -hmm. like, okay, you promoting this or you promoting well, which one you want me to play? You know what I'm saying? I'm over here, I'm over there. Like, you know what I'm saying? What you, what you want me to do? You know, yeah. so you got to, like, I promoted No Capping. For, it came out, like, the end of 2019. I said, I'm just going to stay on this record. I'm going to stay on this record and stay on this record. Um, Drop the Bottom Out was supposed to come out in, like, June. But the, when the COVID hit, you know, the pe the people I partnered with is supposed to come out like under a distribution company um, and with a little bit of um, something behind it. But the COVID hit and it's like when you send an artist out and the artist is new, you know, the artist got to be able to go all around, do interviews and do shows and all that. And you can't do that. Then it's OK. Now, how are we going to get our money? How are we going to make money off of this? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like a catch 22. So we're just waiting for the right time um, to put it out. And the record is like an upbeat record. And guess what? People are saying that they think it's going to be popping in the strip clubs. <laughs> Ironically. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't set out to do that. But the sound is, is like, yeah, you know. 
and, and and I ain't mad because a lot of the songs that are famous and that are hits, they got promoted in the in the strip club. Like a lot of so songs in Atlanta, they they promoted them in the strip clubs. That's how they got popular. You know what I'm saying? The strippers were sliding down the poles on them. You know, and all the ballers is in there, and then they're hearing the records, and they go back and they play them and download them. That's how they promote the records. So I wouldn't be mad at that. I'm like. I, I don't discriminate. You know what I'm saying? Promotions is promotions. Mm -hmm. there you you go. know, but it's an upbeat club record. You know what I'm saying? It's like a whole 360 from um, no capping. It's like something different. You want to show people that you're versatile. I mean, mm -hmm. I could even do the yellow, yellow school bus rap. I could do that all day if I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Bus rap, huh? Yeah, the yellow, the retard rap. You know what I'm saying? I was in these little meetings and stuff, and as soon as the retard rap come on, they like, their head is bouncing and shit. And then if you come on with some lyrical shit, they go, oh, that's that New York shit. Like, oh, that's a lane. Oh, now we're a lane? Um, excuse me, the last time I checked, we created this shit. Real okay? Real right. Real right. It's, it's real hip-hop. Yeah, but they don't want real hip-hop now. You know what I'm saying? They want the yellow school bus to pull up. Beep, beep. <laughs> that shit their okay yeah. yeah that yellow school bus rap I could go in right now and block out 10 hours in studio time and I could do a whole fucking yellow school bus album off the top of my head that's how easy it is you know what I'm saying because they're point A to point B rappers it's all about with, with the yellow school bus rap it's all about patterns I, I call it patterns you know what I'm saying? Because it'd be like hopping the coop. <laughs> I mean, it's patterns. It's, if you listen to each of the record, they all have almost the same patterns. They just switch them up. You know what I'm saying? So they do these little patterns. It just goes fast, and then they slow it down. Then they do the triplets. Like, I could do that all day. They ain't talk about nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hip-hop is cracking up. Yellow school bus rap. <laughs> beep, beep. The bus what? is pulling up. Beep, beep. What? You know what I'm saying? And, but people like that shit. I remember New York was so resistant to the to the down south. Uh, yellow bus was pulling up in New York. And the yellow bus, you know, they stopped that shit at the toll booth. And they was like, nah, you ain't gonna come up in here with this yellow bus shit. You ain't gonna come in here doing that shit. And then after a while, they had to roll with the punches. Oh my you know God. what I'm saying? That people was complaining. Oh, hell no, I won't go. Hell no. And then all of a sudden, you see him in the club like this. Zoom! Watch how we do it. Zoom! And then, and I, oh, I thought you didn't like that, but you went there doing the soldier boy and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh. come on. So it's like you couldn't. They New York couldn't beat them. Now they joining them. So everybody on doing the, those patterns. You know, they got the drill music or whatever, <laughs> and then people hear that and they next starts going. I was like, oh gosh. But I I don't know. I'm I'm willing to hope that real hip-hop will make a comeback. History always repeats itself. Yeah. Remember I said that. History always repeats itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In everything, in every, like, situation, circumstance, life. Right. Situation. Yeah. That's Remember true. gangster rap? Remember we had Easy e All of that? The gangster rap era? Well, history repeats itself. Guess what? Now we got drill music. Drill music is the gangs. They that's their 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 lane. You know what I'm saying? So you know, gangster rap come back. It just came back in a different way. MC and is gonna come back. It's gonna come back in a different form. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now they're gonna have to get off the yellow bus to do that. I don't know if you can. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have to go and get some therapy or some shit and some, take some <laughs> vocabulary classes or something. I don't know, but maybe it'll be different people that evolve and do it. But there's real MCs out there 
And if you like that, you need to support it. Otherwise, get your fucking ticket and get on the fucking yellow bus. Baby! <laughs> <laughs> my friend calls it the retard music like yeah my boys and them they like the retard music I call it yellow school bus rap you know what I'm saying they rhyme and I, I could just picture them dribbling in the view booth <laughs> but what you gonna do that's what's popping now that's what people are buying you know, you know what I'm saying Panda, Panda, that one was like, Panda, I don't even know who sings that song, but I remember... Yeah, well, actually, you know, he's from New York. That's Designer. He's actually from New York. Designer? Yeah. Designer, that's what it was. I heard it. He's actually from New York. Yeah, he has, yeah, he talks like crazy, but I actually like that song, though. I kind of like that song. It's just, it was banging, like, that was on ringtone. See, if you come up with something catchy like that, and yeah. Sound it's appealing and that's why people liked them and that's why that hit like blew up like when you hear right what, again designer. Uh, designer right designer. when you hear that you're like oh yeah yeah the one that came up with uh panda or like you hear certain people that's where you know those hits come in and that's where you kind of got to be like oh okay so that's what people like but then also not get caught up on all that stuff because a lot of people get caught up oh i'm just gonna rap about um pussy money weed uh cars change this and that since everybody digs that a lot of times and popping percocets yeah, percocets pop all right ending up on the yellow school bus the short bus so sometimes yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm like you gonna be in albuquerque He's like yeah that yellow bus is pulling up ain't it baby <laughs> <laughs> they gonna be like what you talking about girl <laughs> i'm gonna get you in trouble <laughs> yellow bus what you talking about i ain't on that yellow bus <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A five year olds could write write those raps. It's like so simple. But there but what gets people is the patterns. Their patterns, their melodies, patterns. You know what I'm saying? They got the pain music. Like those those rappers, they rap about their pain. You know, I was born on the shit crew on the farm. And my mother didn't have no money, you know. They just like sing song rapping. You know those rappers that be they be like singing and rapping, but they be talking about their pain. You know what I'm saying? It's like different different lanes, you know. But the New York lane, when I went out of town, they're like, oh, oh, you, oh, you doing that that uh, uh real hip hop? That's that New York shit. I'm like, what the fuck is that New York shit? You doing? Guess what? You doing New York shit too? Cause you this came from New York. All this shit you doing came from us. Going out in the park, starting this shit. If it wasn't for us, UPS is hiring motherfuckers. Okay, you will be right at U UPS flipping burgers, doing whatever you doing, working at Amazon. If it wasn't for New York, like I just don't like it when they keep saying that. It's like don't bite the hand that feeds you, and then New York doesn't get together. And and take back their culture, like you know, we need to learn how to work together more, so much, we could take this stuff back. Yeah, I feel like too much glorification and like goes to Hollywood, California, and shit. They don't remember where all that hardcore, real rap shit comes from. All that shit where there was stories and stuff. People will go and be like, "Oh yeah, California." This a lot of stuff was brought from the East Coast to the West Coast and all that stuff, or even down south. West Coast took that, you know, where people took this from the West Coast to the East Coast. So right. we're like, oh, that's so this and that. Like, actually, the East Coast, New York and all that, they had the most, like, dopest rapper. The accents, the, like, style, the unique. Right. And we still got a lot of dope rappers. We got a lot of Nicki Minaj from here, New York. Cardi B, New York. Nas, New York. I'm talking about rappers that still currently have records out you know what i'm saying i could go all day but we don't get that respect like you don't realize that a lot of these rappers are from new york you know what i'm saying but we got to command our respect and the only way that we could command our respect is if we bind together have a fucking town meeting you know what i'm saying 
jump off the yellow fucking bus because you're sitting in the back of the bus. You're not even sitting in the front of the bus. You're in the back of the bus like this. And jump off the bus. Let's have a town meeting and see how we could get together and, and, and take our culture back. You know what I'm saying? We got all the, um, the pioneers that's going around that's still doing music. They don't get the time of day. You know what I'm saying? Cool Herc, good friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? All these people, they, they don't do shows. The, the new age don't partner with them. They look at them like, you know, oh, the old heads. Like, who told you to make rules on who could do what and when? You know what I'm saying? Music is music. Are you going to tell, uh, did, would you tell Whitney Houston if she was still alive? God bless the dead. But if Whitney Houston was still alive, would you tell Whitney Houston, oh, you better sit down. You need to stop making music now. Oh, my God. Yeah. She's like, you're not 19. No, you ain't going to say that to Whitney. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to say that to Beyonce when Beyonce is 45 and pushing 50 and she's still out here shaking that ass? No, you're not going to say that. So who made these rules in hip-hop that Nas and all Jay-Z, all Jay-Z comes out, and when Jay every time Jay-Z comes out, he waxes that ass. And they be trying to say little stuff, but see, you can't really contest greatness. Jay-Z could sell out Madison Square Gardens at the drop of a fucking coin. You know what I'm saying? These yellow school bus rappers, you got to get like 20 of them to sell up the garden. You couldn't sell out it by yourself. You know what I'm saying? That bus got to pull up full. You got to pull up with the bus full, not half full. Not one or two. Jay Z could go by himself and fill the garden up right now. And guess what? Jay Z is not nineteen. So I I need hip hop to stop making these fucking rules. Dope is dope. You know what I'm saying? Bars is bars. If a motherfucker got them bars, who's you to tell people what to do and when to go sit down? Yep. So. Right, right. They don't pay homage to these people. And another thing is, you know, we need to get the bright idea. And, and I'm, I'm going to save these lives because y'all going to remember that I said this. You know what I'm saying? If somebody comes out with this, remember I said this here. I wish I could partner with an insurance company and get a deal with them and strike a deal to get insurance for people who retire for hip hop. Because they don't have no insurance. The pandemic right now, if you don't have no insurance and you get that COVID, you're going to be fucked. Because they damn sure are going to send you that bill. You know what I'm saying? Cool her, all these people, the Juice Crew, Sharte, all these people, they need, they should have health care for life. The way they paved the, the, the way for these artists to throw money out and buy all these chains and buy ridiculous things and all these million dollar houses, million dollars cars, and all these people who created the way for you to show your ass on the yellow bus doesn't have health coverage. People don't realize that. You know what I'm saying? They get sick, they get diabetes, all these people are dying from all these diseases, and they don't even have health care to go and fuck into the doctor after they did all this work in hip hop. All this work that they put in. The Sugar Hill Gang. I've I seen one of them lately. That he couldn't even hardly see. And I asked him, I said, oh, I said, what happened to you? He said, oh, my diabetes. You know what I'm saying? He's going blind from his diabetes. He should be taken care of for life. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because if you didn't, right, right. Even traveling to risky places, right? You're right, Hip Hop Lust. These people should have insurance. They should have a pension. You know what I'm saying? If you want to fucking do something, let's do that. Let's do that. And I wish I could get with a Aetna or one of these companies. I'm going to start calling them up on my own. And I don't know shit about health care. I don't know nothing about health care. But if I could put together a plan for all these uh, so-called old, what you call old heads and shit, or whatever the fuck you want to call them, the people that that are the reason why you feeding your kids and all these babies that you make for no reason and shit and baby mamas, 
you know, and money and throwing and rolling around in Miami and boats and diamonds and buying million dollar chains. These people are suffering and have no health care and dying broke. And while you living high off of the land, you know what I'm saying? The labels don't give, do the labels give you health care? I wish um, Breaking the New was on there so I could ask them. Well, Hip Hop Loves, you work with the labels. Do they have health care at the labels? Do they give the artists health care? Or you got to go get your own health care? Mm. Okay. But when you retire, you don't have health care. You don't have a pension. You don't have a fund to live off of. If you go broke, you go broke. And nobody cares. That's it. Flat line the end. So that's another thing that we got to change in this big business of uh, hip hop. This big billion trillion dollar business of hip hop needs to give back. Just like when you go to work, right? You know how they take out of your check that you got to pay like health care insurance. They take a little out each week. They should take a little bit out of these motherfuckers checks and give it to the people and the pioneers for a pension and for health care. You know what I'm saying? Let's have some of you big celebrities <clears throat> and, and people that's living high off the land and making all this money. Why don't you give back and do that if you really want to be doing something? You know what I'm saying? Because if you, one day, the, unless you're Benjamin Button's motherfucker, one of these days, you're going to look up and you're going to be like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm all head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that yellow bus is going to pull the fuck over and it's going to kick. It's going to be like tuck and roll. It ain't going to stop. It's going to say tuck and roll, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Most artist labels are still recouping from artists that when they, right, they still recouping. So they can't even give the health care. It'll probably cost so much to give the health plans. You will have to make a deal with these insurance companies to go in just like they do all these companies and jobs that you work for, Old Navy, Gap, and all of them. They all partner with these health coverage places, and they take a little bit out your check every week. So that way, when you got to go to the doctor, you got to get a tooth pull and shit, you could go do that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All, all these old the people that retired and, and did all this work and toured for years, went to Europe and, and gave blood, sweat, and tears, they're suffering, they're poor, they're broke, and they don't have health care. And now is the worst time to not have health care. The worst. Yep. So this is on record. If somebody goes out and do that, I want my credit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody's I, thinking about that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if nobody's thought about that or what, or if nobody, you know, like um, Hip Hop Love says, they can, or let's see, they could, but they don't do it. They Like, they could. There has to be a reason why they're not benefiting it in a way. They're not benefiting in a way, so they don't want to do it, maybe. I don't know. Right. But that's I have a really good point, and people need to point that out and take that into like a big consideration. Bye, Moosey. Exactly. Right. These labels make big money. They they can if they want to, but they won't. So hey, what are you going to do? So anyway, like I said about a half an hour ago, thanks for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You 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 a trooper. You was on the in the Zoom. You know we kicked it. Then you came on here. You kick it. But hey, this is how we network and we get in the loop. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know. You know what your ne where your next thing is gonna come from. That's gonna get you to the next level. So you know, like the lotto says, you gotta be in it to win it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Having me on too, and hip hop loves. Thank you for having me on. And like I said. If it wasn't for female MCs, I wouldn't even be networking right now with you guys. So it's a, having a platform and everybody supporting and sh spreading the word. Like, hey, right. real knockout, you know, like join her live, follow her on Instagram, check out her new, uh, her new single, No Capping, this and that. And it's like that little bit could go like a far way, you know? Right. So, yeah. 
been online for over six hours. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, shout out to General. He has um pe people like need to know he has a whole platform. It's called Female MCs, and he puts female MCs on there all day, every day, twenty four hours a day. There's so many female MCs out there, you would be surprised. You know what I'm saying? But they just don't get the visibility. So So big up to general. Um thank you guys for yeah. having me talking with me. No doubt. You know, so thank you. And I enjoy I enjoy it too and it's fun. It's not something like where you go and you're like, damn, I dread this. It's talking about, <laughs> it's like, it's talking about like, right. you know, I don't want to talk to these people. I already know what they're gonna say. Mm -hmm. It's fun to me, it's nice and I like, you know, I like talking. Well, I should I shouldn't say it. like I like talking about music and world world stuff, you know, because I can't sit right. there and have a conversation with somebody that's ignorant and all that other stuff. Because right. there's too much of that negativity in the world. So I think we're pretty good. We speak positivity. I learned a lot of information from you. A lot of loopholes, websites. There's a lot of people on here that show love. Thank you, everybody. And then did you take notes? You took notes too, didn't you? I always take notes. <laughs> I know. I see. Even in the meeting, you take notes. That's really good habit to have. A lot of people don't do that. I noticed that. You know? That. Yeah, it's in one ear, out the other, and then they wonder why. Like, oh, wow, what, what was that thing that she said? <laughs> yeah, so I try to always be on that, too, because I want to go back. I want to do my homework and all that. I don't want to forget how to do that, how I need to do it, and that's why it's done right. So I'm right. happy for all this information that you give me, because people won't do that. People will go and give you the wrong information, misleading information, so you can go and, so you can go and fuck up. So right. So you can go and be on so they could see you and be like, haha, you know, she kind of felt instead of you, you know, you meet real people, cool people and shit, you know, you're leading me in the right direction. So thank you for that. And everybody. Right. Here, they yeah. People you. will lead. Yeah. You got to be careful of that. People will lead. like I'm an actor also. And I used to be in an audition room, and then you have other actors that will ask somebody going for the same role, oh, how do you think I should do this part? And in my head, I'm going, you stupid motherfucker. They're going to tell you the wrong thing. They're going to be like, I think you should whisper it like a cat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're going to tell you the wrong thing to do. You know? And you're going to go do it. Nah, so, yeah. Right. I'm thankful for meeting people like you you know, you and uh, Renee and everybody on the Zoom calls in general, because that really gives, you know, I wouldn't talk with you. I wouldn't have, I don't think, I've gained a lot of followers since then and recognition. So, like I said, I wasn't getting a lot of recognition and stuff. I'm going to keep building. I'm going to continue to keep building. And I feel like I'm, I, I never want to stop and settle for less. Like when people are like, oh, you know, well, you're good. You, you'll have like, you know, a million followers. Like I want two million. And it's not, it's not selfish or anything, but it's like setting, you know, like do it, you know, set your goals. Right. You got to have somebody that says business. You got to have somebody there to sell to. You can't sell the two followers and shit. All two of you go buy my single now. You know what I'm saying? You make a whole fucking two dollars. No, you want to, you got to, you got to build your, th your, your platform up. People respect numbers now. And that's just, that's just real. You know what I'm saying? They respect numbers. And that's why a lot of people that you see and people like, oh, they can't rap. Why are they there in that spot? Because they got their numbers up and they knew yep. how to do it. And I'm going to find out what these little young cats are. I found out one thing. Fuckers, I'll tell yeah. you. I'll tell you that. Or, but, I, but you got to know this when you get streaming platforms. You know what I'm saying? But there's something that, that, that people are doing on YouTube. Because you ain't going to tell me that you just upload a video and it went viral. How did it go viral? No, you uploaded something, I uploaded something. But yours went around the world and mine went to the fucking living room. How did that happen? No, you they doing something. They just don't want, So you just got to get all your knowledge and go to YouTube University and get busy. YouTube and Google is your best friend yep. right now. It's free information, too. You can go and right. pay for, you can pay for somebody, and you don't even know if you can trust them. Or you can go to Google, do some research. Right. You'll be good. Uh, and authentic followers, like hip hop loves, because people be buying all these followers, and then they don't realize that you talk it to yourself. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. At the end of the day, you talk it to yourself. Like you're only fooling yourself. At the end of the day, like the people who might look good and all that to have these hundred thousand followers, but at the end of the day, you're talking to yourself. And 
Instagram, Twitter, they up on all that shit. Now they be fucking having uh, sweeps where they delete. They Remember they had that one delete and then a lot of people got exposed, you know what I'm saying, for all these followers? And YouTube too. YouTube and shit, if they get a hold of you doing something with the bots or whatever, they'll put them strikes and stuff on your channel. That's why the numbers be wet lag because they be checking to see if those spins is real. They, you know, now they crack it down on that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's really not worth it buying those followers because it'll fuck up your whole platform. They'll yeah, mess I, it up. Streams, I, don't buy streams, none of that. Do get it, get your streams. Get on the playlist. You know, because it'll yep. it'll mess it up. It'll mess up your platform. All right, Destiny. It was nice talking to you. Like I said, like I said, another twenty minutes ago. <laughs> You're just a great person to talk to. That's all. You know what I'm saying? You too. Yeah. So it was another good show tonight. We got a lot of information in. You know, Definitely. check it out. I'm a, I'm gonna figure out how to expand the show. I'm just doing a lot of stuff over here. I'm redoing my apartment. And my goal is to redo my apartment before the the winter gets here. I want this set up so I could bring the studio in, have everything set up. But I'm just multitasking, doing all these things. But I want to figure out how to record it on Instagram and on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I'm going to figure it out. I know there's an app that does that. So I'll, I'll figure it out, even if I have to use two devices um, to record. Yeah. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> All right, Destiny. So peace out. Make sure you all follow Destiny. You know what I'm saying? Type type your at in one more time when you leave or whatever. Type it in. Yeah, type it in and I'll pin it so people can follow you. And it was a great show this week, people. Okay. This we got more good vests. Good uh, guest coming up. Yeah, y'all can follow me on Instagram. I put out something every Monday, something different. It's always different. I always mix up whether it's the beats, whether it's the storyline, and I'm going to start putting more music on platforms and stuff. So thank y'all and all of my followers and everybody that's watching. Thank you. And thank you, Miss Knockout. Yeah, no doubt. I don't know why my pinning don't work. Oh, uh, maybe I got to unpin this first. Okay, unpin it. I always have trouble with the pinning. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, that's just not a sneeze. Oh, that's a sneeze. Somebody's sneezing. Oh, here it goes. All right. So, y'all make sure y'all follow Destiny. MC, you know what I'm saying? Follow her and, and keep an eye on her and you know, peace <laughs> yeah. out. All right, peace out, girl. All right, we'll see you. Have a good night. Okay, good night. Yeah, so yeah, there we have it, people. Conversations with a rap check, another week in the damn can. We got a lot of information in this week. Who we still got on the line? <laughs> She's cracking up. Yep. So thanks to everybody that checked in. Onadi, oh, Hip Hop Loves, Breaking the New. Breaking the New, you you better be lucky you left. I was going to pull you in here on the request. You know what I'm saying? And um, yo, Hip Hop Loves is funny. <laughs> And um, we'll be back next week. Um, you know, I, I should have that fly up earlier this week. You know, we're going to get it popping. But hopefully I'll be able to get it on Facebook and YouTube and get everything going and figure it on out, you know. But thank you for joining us. And I'll see you next Saturday at 8 p.m. All right? Sharp. Okay. Make sure you check out my song, No Capping, out now. Step up if you want to get hurt. Video up. Everything's in my bio. Click on it. You'll see everything. And much love. Be safe. Wear your mask. 
Don't be one of those be want to fight somebody because they told you, put your mask on. Yeah, you ready? No, wear your mask. Be safe. And follow your dreams. And don't let nobody tell you different. All right? Peace out, y'all. Miss Knockout. And I'm out.